Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making a coffee scoop. Well, who doesn't like a fresh coffee in the morning? And for me, I have this little plastic scoop that I measure out the coffee with, and it's very specific, and I have it down to a system where I have so many scoops that I put in, and so much water, etc., etc. And I like that exact uh, ratio between coffee and water. So I got the idea of why not make a wooden scoop like this, because this little plastic thing is kind of cheesy. But the problem is, is that this thing has the rounded bottom and I'm not exactly sure the capacity that it holds. So I think the first step in this entire process is going to be some experimentation as far as figuring out what size of a scoop to make when reproducing it out of wood. Well, let me just see if I can let you guys into my thought process here and see if it can make any sense. This is the original scoop, and like I said, it's rounded, and I'm not sure of the capacity of it or how to translate it to the wood. So this is a little barbaric the way I'm going to do it, but it works. When making something out of wood, of course, it's not going to be as thin as this plastic. And while this here is approximately an inch and a half in diameter, I have a one and three quarter inch diameter Forstner bit. Now we're going to be having a flat hole in our scoop, and this is where I'm having the problem with the, basically, the transition between the round and the flat as far as how much it will hold. So the next thing I have is sugar. And it could be sugar, it could be salt, it could be whatever, it could be sand if you like. Anything granular that you can measure the capacity of this as far as uh, how much it will hold and how much the hole is going to hold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this scrap piece of pine over to the drill press. I'm going to install this one and three quarter inch diameter Forstner bit and I'm going to drill a few holes of different depths. I'll start off with a quarter inch, then I'll go a half inch. I might even, you know, go five eighths. Don't go through the board, obviously, because it's not going to ha help you with how much this scoop is going to hold. But I'll drill a few of those holes and then we'll come back and do a little bit of experimenting. Well, I have four holes drilled at an eighth of an inch, quarter inch, three eighths, and a half inch deep. And I'm not sure which one is going to be usable for me. So we'll take a scoop, a level scoop here of our sugar, and we're just going to put it into one of these. I'm kind of thinking the three eighths might be the one we want, but I'm not sure. Nah, that ain't going to cut it, is it? little too much. So maybe the half inch one. So let's try this. My wife is going to be really angry when she sees how much sugar I'm wasting here. Ah, she doesn't need the extra sugar anyway. All right, so let's do this. And you know what? It looks like it might be a little deeper than the half inch. So let me drill a 5 eighths hole and we'll see if that fills it so I can get it level. So we'll just get another scoop of sugar here and fill our 5 8 deep hole and we'll see if that levels out across it. Well, for my liking it's a little too deep now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with this. I'm going to back this off just a little bit because I think that if we go a sixteenth less, we'll probably have the perfect measurement. And once you get that, well, then you know the measurement to drill for your coffee scoop. And with another hole drilled at nine sixteenths of an inch deep, we'll give that a try and see how it works out. Oh, it might be a little high. I don't know. Let's just pat that down. Scoop in the stuff that we spilled. Give it a little smoosh. 
you know what guys that's the measurement right there that's perfect that is one and three quarters in diameter by nine sixteenths of an inch deep so now we know the drill that we need or the size of the hole that we need for the cavity of our coffee scoop now that we have that let's talk about the design of our coffee scoop well, if Kenny's got out his pad and his marker, that usually means it's about to get confusing. At least in my mind it is. But I'll see if I can uh, alleviate any confusion here and explain what I have in mind. We've got the hole that we need. Hopefully it will drill a little rounder than what I've just done there. And we know that that is one and three quarter inches in diameter. Well, I'd like the body of the scoop to be one eighth of an inch thick. So if we draw a second line here, assuming that this is going to be one eighth of an inch thick, to get one eighth of an inch here and one eighth of an inch here, that's a total of one quarter inches, which means that the entire diameter of our scoop is two inches in diameter. Now we need a bit of a handle here and we'll just come off something like this. And that will be the top view of our scoop. Now the side view, of course, we will have this sort of thing happening, but here is the edge of our circle. You can see that this lines up here. So this will be the edge of our circle and we'll want to taper this up like this and we could do that with sanding afterwards but the first thing we're going to do is going to choose our material i'm going to head over to the wood rack over there and see what kind of a scrap pieces that i've got hanging around one thing that i neglected to mention is if this hole is 9 16th of an inch thick i think we're going to go with a minimum thickness of our stock of three quarters of an inch so that's what we're looking for, a piece that's at least maybe two inches by three inches possibly and three quarters of an inch thick. So our scrap piece of walnut here that we found on the rack and we're just going to put a line in from the edge at one and one sixteenth of an inch. Now this is going to be our center line of our um, coffee scoop. The next thing you want to do is grab a compass. Now with your compass, we have it set to draw a circle with a diameter of two inches. So this is gonna be our outside diameter of our coffee scoop. We're just gonna draw it on there. Make it nice and clear so that you can see it because we're gonna need to cut it out afterwards. But there we go, a nice clear two inch diameter circle. Just double check your measurements and then we can move on to drawing out our handle. Now what we're going to do is set up our tape measure or our ruler so that it lines up with our center line on any one of the marks, it doesn't matter where, and slide your ruler or your tape measure along until the edges of your two inch circle here line up with the half inch mark. And when you get that, just put a little tick there so that you know where that mark lines up. So basically, you're going to have a one inch wide marking here. Now, depending on how long the handle is, I think we can maybe go like an inch and a quarter. So let's, let's do that and line up back here. And we're gonna make this a quarter of an inch wide. So place a mark right there at one eighth of an inch out from each edge of the center and then using a ruler, just line up with that mark on the circle and the mark that you just placed at the quarter inch and draw yourself a nice solid line. Now, once you get those lines drawn, we're going to get a circle template and we're going to round off our inside corners here and our end of our handle there. Well, I apologize if the view is not very well, uh, not very good with the pencil on the walnut, but I'll just tip this up and show you. 
this is the shape we're kind of looking at now. And you have it out or drawn out, you're happy with it. You can see the mark here from the compass. What we're going to do is take this over to the drill press now and drill that one and three quarter inch Forstner bit hole at nine sixteenths of an inch deep. Now it's as simple as cutting around your lines that you've drawn with your scroll saw. And for this, I've got a number seven reverse tooth bit installed, and that should be just fine for this three quarter walnut. So we're gonna start on the straight edge and then work our way around um, the circumference of our circle and then finish off at the handle. Okay, truth be told here, guys, I'm not liking the way this blade is cutting. I'm going to say this blade is dull. Uh, it has been used for quite a few projects. And when it comes to working on the scroll saw and that sort of thing, don't be afraid to change your blade. If it's not cutting well, then it's not cutting well. Get rid of it and put a new blade in there. You'll save yourself a lot of aggravation with your projects. And just as you would with the table saw, you just want to make sure that your blade is cutting square, especially when you've changed a blade. You never know when you would knock something uh, out of whack. So just double check it. Well, it's starting to look a little more like a coffee scoop, but I don't like this bulky handle. So we're gonna take this over to the oscillating drum sander. I'm gonna shape this handle here, and as well, I think I'm gonna get the trim router, and I'm gonna route a 1 8 inch round over all the way around the bottom of the scoop. Now, you wanna be careful doing that. It is a small part, so be extremely careful routing that. I would route the profile here first and then possibly do the shaping of the handle afterwards. The other thing I'm going to be doing is I cut a little outside the line on some of these parts and I'm okay with that because that's what sanders are for and we will use the oscillating drum as well to sand up to the line on those parts where I veered outside. finished the outside shaping and I've done the 1 8 round over along the bottom. So I'm just going to take this over to the disc sander and just rough out the majority of this material from this edge up to whatever thickness I want this and then we're going to come back to the spindle sander to finish it off. So we've got some rough shaping done and we're going to finish it off on the spindle sander. I apologize for the uh, poor audio but that's what happens when you have your dust mask on, guys. So let's finish shaping this up. And the final step in this process is to give this thing a really good sanding here and uh, making sure that, you know, it's nice soft edges and that there's nothing sharp about this top edge here that we didn't route. So we're just gonna give this a good sanding all over and then 
All that's left to do after that is give it a treatment. Well, just before I put the coating on it, as if I haven't wasted enough sugar, we'll just test it against our original scoop and make sure that it holds the right amount. And we'll just pour it in there carefully. And there you go. Look at that. That's beautiful. That is right on the money. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now we'll go get our coating. And in case you're wondering what that coating would be, that would be the exact same coating that I use on the end grain cutting boards. Well, the coating is nothing more than a mixture of paraffin wax and mineral oil. And I'm not even going to be pretty about it. I'm just going to dunk this in here, swish it around, give it a real good soaking. Look at the way it makes that wood come out. I love that. Dunk it in. Get it just saturated with this coating. And then once we've got that like that, just sit it off to the side. Let that soak in for a bit. And then once it's done soaking in, just wipe it down and that's it. You're done. Uh, if you guys are interested in this coating, it's fantastic for cutting boards, 100% food safe. Uh, I'll put a link to, uh, to the show where I show you how to make that down in the descriptions below. Once again, if I forget, just remind me, guys. And there you have it. A coffee scoop. Guys, this is a really fun project and it's a real quick one if you want it to just kill a little bit of time in the shop and a great one to use up some scrap wood. I mean, all we really used was a scrap of three quarter inch walnut that was about two inches by three inches long. I mean, that's really not much use anywhere else in the shop for most projects, but some guys would consider it scrap and this project works well for alleviating that and using it up, you know. So it's also a project that you don't require a ton of equipment. I mean, what did I use? I used, well, the scroll saw, drill press, I used a sander. Some of you guys, or the majority of you guys, have this in your shop. If you don't have a scroll saw, you can use a coping saw and sand up to the lines afterwards. You don't even have to be an expert with the coping saw in that case. Guys, it's a great little project and a lot of fun, and you can very easily change it up and make it so that it's not just a coffee scoop. I know that I did that barbaric thing where I wasted a bit of sugar, but, you know, what the heck? In the end, I got a perfect measurement for the coffee scoop. What if you were to translate that into doing, oh, I don't know, wooden measuring spoons? Can you imagine giving somebody a set, a custom set of wooden measuring spoons, burning the measurements into the handle? What a great Christmas gift or birthday gift idea that would be. Just throwing it out there that this project doesn't just end at the coffee aspect of it. It could be passed on to other things like measuring spoons, measuring cups, quarter cup, one third, two thirds, three quarters of a cup, one cup. It's endless. Whatever it is that you want to do, you could potentially do it and make a great set of measuring cups or spoons out of wood. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this week's show. And I hope you're going to join me again next week for yet another woodworking video.